unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. One of the ashes gave me a testimony. I think I was at the lunch hour, I think. And said, Pastor Zach, there's a border man we found. He's looking for us. I said, why? He said, we put a sticker on his border border. 
And he had wanted a new border border. Some people had promised him a new border border for a long time. But yesterday when they put a new sticker, they called him for a new border border. Are you getting me? So, I mean, the border guy is looking for Fanero. The border guy, he's looking for Fanero. You know, let me tell you something. We, we are part of history. And some of you, it's going to take time to understand it. But don't worry. <laughs> you know when you're in the thing, it's a different life. But those that are outside, they understand. They feel it. Are you getting me? It's, it's the heat is too much for many. And, and I don't know why they... Let me tell you, Fanero is simple. It's a simple thing. It's the manifestation of the Christ we talk about. That's the ministry of Fanero, the manifestation of the Christ we are talking about. Two days ago, they called me to a lady who had an accident in Kenya. And they had called me to pray for her some time back, but when I wanted to go, she had been taken away from Zambia. In fact, I don't know, she's called, is she here? She's called Alice. They had told me they might bring her. Is she here? Is there any lady called Alice, a Kenyan lady? Oh, she didn't come. She'll come another time. But this is what's interesting. So they called me, and after my work schedule, I, I had promised, I told her I'll come tomorrow, when she called me. And they told me the story, that she had had an accident, and she had, listen, her whole back, the discs got disjointed, her legs, she had taken back to Aga Khan Hospital, I think, one of those hospitals in Nairobi, or Kisumu, for an operation. So when I got in, I knew what, what I was expecting to see. The woman was down flat. She was, and there were, I think her sisters or cousins, I don't remember. But it's weird. As soon as I entered the room like this, a light turned on in the spirit. Are you getting me? I, listen, before you pray, are you getting me? Before you pray, before you speak a word, because you are there, as soon as I got into the room like this, I saw many ladies and they were all not smiling. I said, why aren't you laughing? That's what I said. That's how I came in. I said, well, listen, they're all there. It was a corner of light ladies. I don't know why they were all light. I don't know which tribe of in Kenya that is. All of them were light. But as soon as I entered the room, the lights changed. I said, why aren't you all laughing? Then they, they all looked at me and they, they, they all faked a laughter. Immediately. They all faked because they wanted to show me that they were laughing. So I started talking. I started talking. But listen, let me tell you something. Before we prayed for the woman or laid hands or said any words, she was healed. The Bible says, for this reason, was the Son of God manifested. Was the Son of God fanarrowed. He was manifested for one reason. That he might destroy, not the devil, the works of the devil. It means, there's a way Christ froze the devil. The ability of the devil was frozen. Now, when you enter a room of a sick man, knowing that the ability of the devil is frozen, the results are different. Jesus did not tell us to pray for the sick. He commanded us. He said, heal the sick. Now, the way you heal is your business. He didn't say lay hands. He didn't say lay hands. Jesus did not tell us to lay hands on the sick. He said, heal. How do you want to heal? How, the question, the how is yours. How do you want to get, get for your finances? That's your business. Do you realize he has put possibilities in front of us and he has told us choose. And listen, that's what Fanero has brought to many. Let me tell you something. That's, that's why, listen, we come in the numbers. That's why we talk about it all the time. Because this life, this life, Today I was, I was thinking about one thing. And I think I've shared, I think I was talking to Pastor Nixon some time back. Let me tell you, the life of the Spirit is a sure life. It's not, it's not a life of it might, it might not. The life of the Spirit is a sure life. That's why the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. The life in God is not a life that is unpredictable to the believer. The life in God is so obvious. 
Are you getting me? And so I was asking God, I said, what's, what is taking, listen, what's taking many to understand, to come to this mind? And he told me one thing. What makes us the X factor? He's the spirit. That's what makes the difference. Do you understand me? What makes the difference is the spirit. Let me tell you, what is different about you is that you are born of God. The Bible says, he that is born of God is above all. The Bible says in John 4.24, the Bible says God is a spirit. He didn't say he's, he said he's a spirit. He's a kind of spirit. It means there are many spirits, but God is a kind of spirit. Now the question is, the question is, how do I know? That's the difference. Many men have failed to understand what, what it means when the Bible says God is a spirit. So if, if you're begotten of God, that means you are a spirit. Do you understand me? You mean, someone was, I was having a, a conversation with one of my workmates. And I was telling her about my son. And I told her, you know, I, you know what, it's funny. My son is turning three soon. But if you ask him, what's your daddy's name? He doesn't say it. He says, Pastor Zach. Now I was like, I ask him all the time. He says, I say, what's your daddy's name? He says, Pastor Zach. He doesn't say Mr. Zach. No. Listen, listen, listen. I'm a gift to the body of Christ. That's primarily, are you getting me? Primarily, that's who I am. The Mr. Zach is secondary because that's, that's the testimony of the body. Because I'm primarily a spirit. So she was telling me, listen. <laughs> she was telling me, no, 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 no. Your son needs to know you as daddy, father. You understand? No, no, I'm not raising my kind like that. Eh? You can raise yours your way. Me, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I want, listen. Sometime, I, walk, I went home early and, and I found both of them sleeping near each other. And I looked at them. I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> you understand me? Because for me, I'm not thinking of sons in the flesh. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But you see, what, listen, what has deceived many men is that they're so attached to the flesh, to the testimony of the flesh. And I said, listen, church will have big problems except it detaches itself from that mind. That mind is the problem. We are so attached to our mother, to our sister. Jesus tells Mary, who was her mother? The first miracle, he says, woman. Eh? He says, woman, what do you... Listen, he's addressing mama. At that time, he's not addressing her by my mother who gave. He's, this is the Christ. Talking to her mother. No, listen, 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 listen. Look at that life. Understand that life. Listen, there are two things. If, if you don't understand the anointing, the things of the Spirit, listen, some of the things of the Spirit will never work in your life. Because primarily you're Christ. That's your primary place in God. We're not just Christians. The Bible says they call them Christians. That's what they call them. But it's called the body of Christ. Are you getting me? So I, I was thinking, I said, Lord, 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 listen, we need to get off some things. Listen, Paul talks about two places. He says, I'm caught in betwixt two. Whether to be in the body with you. Or to be with the Lord. He says, but being with the Lord is far, far, eh? far, far much better. He says, but you, for your benefit, for your benefit, how stay within the body. It means, listen, listen, Paul had to first be persuaded that he was relevant to the body of Christ to stay in the body. That means if he was not convinced, he would be with the Lord. He would leave. Look at that kind. Now listen, many people are not getting results in their life because that X factor has not get, got into their spirits. They are still too attached to the body. That's why some things can't work in your life. You can't, listen, you can't live the Christian life that way and get results. We are still attached to, you understand, flesh, you, you, you understand, you know, that kind of thing. And so today I, I asked the Lord, what do you want? He said, listen, man of God. He says, there's this thing called the spirit of life. He, it's, it's the spirit of life. 
The Bible says something very important. It says wisdom is the principal thing. And with thy getting, get understanding. He says wisdom is the best thing in this world. The Bible says that the earth was formed by wisdom. Now listen. How, listen, it was formed by wisdom. Now how don't you carry wisdom? Because listen, it's the primary thing in this world. The Bible says Christ has become our wisdom. It means, it means listen, you are, you are Christ. I'm coming. I'm coming. You know, sometimes it's good to say bold statements so that your ears tingle a bit and you listen. It says, listen, he says wisdom is this principal thing. Now, listen, it means the principal thing is the best thing in life. It's the low thing. It's the foundation of everything that you are. That's the primary place of being a Christian. It means if you don't carry the wisdom of God, there are certain things in your life that will never work. No matter what you do, how, how much you pray, and you understand. Because this thing called wisdom has not been established in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the scripture says something very interesting. Ezekiel 36. We just open Ezekiel 36, verse 24. Ezekiel 36, 24. You know when you're about to receive the word, sometimes you need to really receive. First speak in tongues a bit. You understand? Don't take it for granted. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen. Now listen to the mind of God. He says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries. Out of all countries. And will bring you into your own land. Listen to the mind of God. He says, for I will take you from all heathen. No, <laughs> I will take you from all mediocrity. Are you getting me? I, I will take you from. It means when he takes you from, you don't have the ability to be there with them. Listen to his mind. I will take you from. Okay? And gather you out of all countries. Out of all countries. And bring you into your own land. Next line. Then I will sprinkle clean water <laughs> upon you. You shall be clean. Listen to the prophetic word. He says, you shall. He says, I'll sprinkle water. And the Bible says, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Do you see the mind of God? God, listen, God wanted to bring you out of a life. He said, he, the Bible says he sent his word. He healed them all and delivered them from all their destructions. Listen to the mind of God. God, listen, God does not want you to be healed. Then tomorrow you're sick, then you're healed. Ah, healing is a one-time thing. Listen to the mind of God. Now, I'm, I'm bringing. Some Christians, I know that you see, when you're a Christian, you can be sick, you can be broke sometimes. Sometimes you can be down, sometimes you're up. Sometimes you're, you, you know, son, you're like this, sometimes you're like that. You can't be sure, Pastor Zach. We have had all those chats. I remember a lady. I walked with her and we were driving. And then we were talking about being robbed. She, I don't know. She says, I told her, you know what? You know sometimes when you want to minister, say some bold stuff, you understand, from your heart. I told her, for me, I said, for me, they do not, listen, can I repeat? I looked into her people. They don't rob me. So I said, but Pastor Zach, no. <laughs> you need to become mature. Are you getting me? <laughs> she must tell me about maturity. So we talked, we talked, and we talked a bit. And then we got out of the car, then I walk out into the supermarket in Bugalovi. Now, there's a, listen, there's a time, let me tell you something. There's a time where you need to stop talking. Because the mystery is, that great is the mystery of godliness. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Great, he says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For he was manifest vindicated by the spirit man that means there's a place when you sense the tevan ziba there ought to be a vindication sometimes and let me tell you one thing i've learned the holy ghost is crazy is is desperate to prove so as she was saying that i kept quiet and then she kept talking i said picking buying things we were in bugalobi that big mall there me i bought things then i went to the teal i put them down when i put them down 
they, they went through the machine. Now, it was obvious the quantity I had bought. Dee, dee, the machine. You know the machine said 5,000. The things were laugh about 25,000. I said, listen. I look at the guy. I said, come on. Again. The guy said, 5,000. Then I told the guy, no, come on. Look. Look, look at this splash. It's more than 5,000. The guy told me, ah, don't you understand? Go. <laughs> then I grabbed my things. I, I realized. Eh? This chick, you know what she told me? She told me, Pastor, ah, I'm sorry. You understand? She just, she apologized. I started laughing. <laughs> you understand? I realized that the Holy Ghost is desperate to prove who you are. Are you hearing me? The Holy Ghost. But let him talk. Are you getting me? He's so zealous to ensure that men know that you are a son of God. For the Bible says, for the Spirit testifies with our spirit. It means the Holy Ghost is saying testimony with, with our spirit that this guy is the son of God. They are talking. Are you getting me? The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the sons of God. That's the revelation of who you are. But the, listen, listen. The understanding of it is the issue. Now those stories of, you see, you see, you can have kids and you know you can't be sure. You understand? If, if uh, you this generation, you understand? We flash that. It's, fly, it's over. That generation, you can no longer speak in this day. It's not possible. It's not possible. And that's, listen, for me, I don't preach the gospel to tell people, you know, Jesus loves you. I preach, I, listen, the moment I, I got the inclination that I ought to preach, I saw some crazy things. That's why I started preaching. Because I was born around the gospel. I could have preached it earlier. But I had not yet seen that X factor. Are you getting me? That, you know, that thing that can make Bill Gates get on his knees and say, I want Jesus. Are you getting me? So let's get back to our scripture. I was still continuing. It says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. Give it to me in the message there. I'll pour pure water over you and scrub you clean. <laughs> this is God scrubbing. Not you scrubbing yourself. Now listen. No wonder Jesus said. Jesus said you are clean through the word. You are not clean through prayer. He said, you are clean through the word. Are you getting me? It means you're clean through the word. Are you getting me? It means being clean, being acceptable before God is not because of what you have done. It's because of the word of God. It's because you're begotten of the incorruptible word which lives and abides forever. It means your cleanliness, your acceptability to God has nothing to do with what you can do. But it has everything to do with him. Are you getting me? It, 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 listen, this life has everything to do with him. Next line. Next line. No, our, our scripture, Ezekiel, that is, I'm still there. I'm still there. And I will give you a new heart. Okay? Are you hearing? I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. He says a new one. He says a new one in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's... Oh, First go back to King James. You want to mess me up, Ali. Are you hearing me? Go back to King James. You want to disturb me so early. He says, I knew heart also. Will I give you a new spirit? Will I put within you? Oh. It means, he says, I, I will give you a new heart. It means the heart is God's. Then, after giving you a new heart, he says... And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. It means that he will give you a heart that responds to him naturally. Listen, to the, listen, listen. There is no condition yet for you. Now he's giving you his part. Listen, you have no part. You have it. Listen, your part. Where is your part there? He says, a new heart will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. And then I shall take out the stony heart and put within you a heart of flesh. Next line. 
And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. He, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't say you try. He didn't say you pray. He said I'll cause you. Now look, look, look at what you call Christianity. It means I'll cause you to get married. I'll cause you to have children. I'll cause you to be wealthy. I'll cause you to be the greatest. Are you understanding me? I'll cause you to be the head and not the tail. I'll cause you to be the best teacher in the world. I'll cause you to be everything that I want you to be. I'll cause you. Now, listen. He's still, he's, he's describing. The word statute there, in the Hebrew, I, I found a, a very interesting condition. He said, I, 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 will, I, will, I, will, I will cause you to walk in my condition. The word statutes is the very word condition in Hebrew. He says, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, and cause you to walk in my condition. It means he will cause you to walk in the condition of God. Eh? God, he's not going to give you a condition. That would be lovely for God to create a condition. But he said, I will cause you to walk in my condition. It means I'll cause you to walk the way I walk. And Enoch walked with God. Are you getting me? You understand me? Look, look at your life in Christ. It means your life in Christ is actually the very picture of God living. It's, your life in Christ is the very picture. It's the very diagram. It's the very experience of God. Get it for me in the message. In the message. He said, I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. Next line. You will once again live in the land. No, no, go. uh, The previous verses. The previous two verses. The previous two verses. He says, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you and I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God willed, not self willed. Now listen, it means the moment you became born again, the Bible says you are begotten of the will of God. It means when you became born again, it became impossible for you to have your own will. Now listen, I want to bring this thing very carefully so that you understand it. Because without understanding some of these things, you can't grow in God. You can't grow in God. He says, I will give you a heart that's God willed. That's God willed. When you study the experiences in the Bible, I've started realizing that these are not meditations of men. Yes, there's a place for meditation, but there's a place deeper than meditation. How? When the Bible tells us about Philip, the Bible says when Philip walked out, came out of the water, the Bible says the Spirit caught him. Listen, Philip was not trying to fly. The Bible says, listen, after baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible says when he came up out of the water, the Bible says he was caught up by the Spirit. Philip is not living a life where he's trying to be as in line so that he can fly. Philip is God-willed. Philip, listen, God-willed. You're not self-willed. It means, listen... After preaching like this, you just walk through that. Because, you're, listen, he has another plan to take you somewhere else. When you start realizing that the spiritual life is actually like that, because of the spirit, you start resting in God. Now, let's look at that scripture. Let's look at it. Listen, he says, and when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. <laughs> and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found. He was found. Apostle Emma, they'll find you in Nigeria. Not because... They'll find you married. They'll find you the greatest preacher. Listen, 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 listen. You are caught away. Listen. There is no meditation. The Bible didn't say, and, 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 and Philip began to speak in tongues. Rebus. Are you saying legal, legal Christ? That's why they say, Apostle Grace made a statement, and I trust, I believe. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand it. I believe the statement. He said, actually, Pentecostal churches actually have become the most legal churches. Why? Because 
As the guy comes out of water, he starts speaking in tongues. Just like you took Philip. Are you getting me? Even me, it's time. Are you getting me? Even me, it's time. It's time, Lord. Are you getting me? I was doing radio with Pastor Nixon and, and he tells me about guys doing. He found guys walking around the wall of Jericho. Are you getting me? He said, Jericho must come down. Are you getting me? They were, Jer- they were going. <laughs> the question is, which, which I liked, is who, listen, it came down. Who built it again? Who built it, Pastor Nixon? He says, listen, he says, I will, listen, I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit within you. And then I shall cause you to walk in my condition. (laughs) He said, you shall keep my judgments and walk in them and do them. That's the life of God. You, listen, listen, that's the life. And actually, you start realizing that's the life of grace. Because the Spirit of God is synonymous with the grace. Because actually, the Spirit of God is the very grace of God. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone who believes me, even though he were dead, he shall live. Now, the question is, when did the dead man start believing? Did you ever see that? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is talking to Martha. He's saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he were dead, he shall live. The question is, when did the dead man believe? Uh, When did the dead man believe? It means, listen, the believing actually is not of a man. Do you realize? The only condition is you just have to come. Listen, you have to come to the place where you are truly dead to this world. And then he shall walk in you. That's it. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself. Investigate. Examine it for yourself. That you are dead to the world. It means, listen, once a man is dead to the world, he can only be alive to God. Praise God. Once you are dead to this world, you can only be alive to God. That's it. Because there are two realms. The Bible says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and brought, translated us. Oh, he has transfigured us into the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus Christ. It means you don't exist in the other realm, but you exist in this realm. That's the life in God. It means you all, there's no representation of you in darkness. Do you know what it means to be transformed? Do you know what it means to be translated? Get me that word in Greek. The Bible says, he, listen, he has translated us. He has translated us. It means, listen, the word translate means, let me make it simple. If I get a hundred dollars and I say, give me the exchange in Uganda shillings, you no longer have the dollars. You have the equivalent in Uganda shillings. It's not the same. There's, oh, you no longer have a hundred dollars. You have the equivalent of a hundred dollars in what? In shillings. So when the Bible says you have been translated, The word translated means there is no account. Listen, there is no registry. There is no document that you have actually ever been dead. That's why the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new one. He says he's a new creature. One that has never existed before. That's why if you used to be poor before you were born again, when you became born again, you have actually never been poor. I don't know why people don't understand. People come to the state and say, listen, people come to the state and say, praise the Lord. Before I received Christ, I was, a very, I was suffering. And I gave Jesus. Listen, the question is, how did you comprehend that you suffered? That's what I want to understand. He said, a new heart will I put within you. A new spirit. It means the other one not exists. Now the question is, how did you know that you are poor? How did you, oh, you don't understand me. How did you know? Because the word is translated. What is the word? Oh. The word translated is the word metema in Greek. The fire is to transpose, to transpose, to transfer, remove from one place to another. Of change of situation or place. To remove from the office of a steward, to depart from life 
to die. Next line. Another one. I want one that's more godly. Is there more? Is there more? Is that it? Do you have strong? Okay. It says to carry away, to depose, or you great, to exchange. It means you are exchanged. You are, you are exchanged. The very place where the Bible says that, listen, the Bible says he has reconciled us to himself. You know what that means? The word there is katalaso. He has exchanged us to himself. That's not me. Listen. When you became born again, look. He says, to wit, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, exchanging the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now listen, it means God exchanged us to himself. Help me understand that. It means when I see you, Apostle Emma, that's God. Now, he has also given unto you the ministry. Finish. Now he has, oh, he has given you the ministry of reconciliation. It means now, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, when men meet Apostle Emma, they meet God. Then he exchanges them. Are you getting me? To the same value that he is. Now listen, the mystery is, the mystery is, the Bible says, to it God was in Christ, reconciling. Now God also, Papa God, was in Christ, catalasso men, exchanging men to himself. Now listen, now the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, listen, even God was in Christ, reconciling the world. It means once you are in Christ, you can only reconcile the world. Listen, the Bible didn't say people, it said the world. The world is not just people. No wonder the Bible says, oh, he says, I have overcome the world. It means, listen, once he did it, the world, listen, became, he rendered it effort. Listen, it means when the Bible says, for this reason the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the enemy. It means the enemy right now is jobless. We used to play Mortal Kombat many years ago when I was a young boy. There was this thing, this move, when you're fighting with a guy, and then you'd pull out, there was a move, freeze him. It means when you freeze him like this, you can hit him as much as you want, then you unfreeze and he's dead. Are you getting me? That's what... <laughs> the enemy in your life is frozen. The Bible says he... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For this reason, the Son of God was man, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. You know, I asked God one day. He said, why didn't you destroy the devil? He says, no, they would, it would be boring. <laughs> if I destroy the devil, you know a punching bag? Put a punching bag in a wall. One side, one, when you, a punching bag doesn't punch you back. So when you're bored, you're like, Titi, you hit it, then you pass. That's what you eat. <laughs> huh? He can't listen. He can't. Pa- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the problem is that Christians think that devil can punch you. That's the problem. You, you see, you see, you see. You, you think that he, you can send him one, then you dodge. Some guys are dodging him. Don't dodge. Slap him, then you first talk on the phone. Then you, you understand? Don't. Slap him, then talk on the phone. Says, yes, yes, babe. Oh, I'm coming. Then you slap again. Then you turn back. Then you say, I worship you, God. For who you are. Then you backhand. A backhand. Look at your life in Christ. He's frozen. He has destroyed the works of the enemy. He, it means the, he has disabled the ability of the enemy. It means, oh, oh, no wonder. He has, listen, he's disabled. Now listen, what kind of prayer do you pray knowing that the devil is disabled? Now I want to, I want to hear prayer. What, how do you pray? Father, this day I pray that you may give me daily bread. Are you getting me? 
For this day I pray. Are you getting me? Now, you see, you see, the place of knowledge, the place of knowledge is actually the biggest problem in the body of Christ. And once, because of ignorance, we become a enmity unto ourselves. Because of an ignorance. For a long time, the church of Jesus Christ has been so ignorant. When you find a man saying, you know, like I hear today I saw a statement. They say, a man of God said, a man of God said, ah, my son can't go to Fanero, it's a cult. Now, when you say it's a cult, he actually comes. When you say Fanero is a place with the Spirit of God, men are worshipping, they come. When you say those guys, I hear me, everything works together for good. You see, your Lord was called a devil. Now, if your Lord was called a devil, how do you want to be called Father Christmas only? You understand? All those, only those nice things. You understand? You want, we want, we, for us, we are holy. We are careful. Are you getting me? They even, even close that. We are careful. We don't want any controversy. Listen. He says this, and you shall have all things. Houses, children, what, what, tenfold. With persecutions. This, this one came with the blessing. Confirming what you are. Confirming what you are. Praise God. It came with a blessing. Confirming what you are. Praise God. So, listen, when I started realizing something, I, I started realizing, okay, when I was born again, I was willed to God. I was willed to God. The Bible says, He begat us by His own word. He begat us by the word of truth. It means He brought us forth by truth. That's how you came out. You came out by truth. Now, if He brought you out by truth, how will you live? He says, by His own word, begat He us as a kind of first fruits. He, he, listen, he brought us up as a class that's different from the rest. It means when you became born again, you became one that is separate and different from anybody else. Are you getting me? It means, that's, that's what it means to be born again. You're, you're willed of God. You're willed of God. So it means you carry the will of God in your spirit. You know what you ought to do at every time. Listen, that's my confidence. You, listen, the place of ignorance will ask you what's the will of God. The, the wisdom of God is to say, I am the will of God. Because I'm begotten of the will of God. That's wisdom now. Wisdom has come into... Listen, the place of wisdom is you say what you are in Christ. He says, I'm the... When you're praying, you say, Father, I thank you that I am the wisdom of God. Yes, you need certain direction. But your prayer is, I thank you that I am the wisdom of God. I am the wisdom of God. I am the anointing of God. Praise God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. For he went about doing good. Jesus was not meditating doing good. He was just, listen, wired to do good. The Bible says he went about. It means, listen, as you're getting into your car, you find a lame man. You, you sneeze and he walks. Are you getting me? You're going about doing good. Not because you meditated. No. Because you're wired like this. You're willed of God. You see, Christianity sees as being a struggle. It becomes a rest. There's a notion that people have confused and, and they, don't, they don't understand it. I hear people saying, faith without works. We want to see your works. Faith without works. Listen, let's understand. Faith without works. What does that mean? Jesus did not say that you need to work that faith works. Jesus did not say, work that faith works. He said, that demonstration of faith, that in the end you will see works. It means, well, listen, faith is the assembly of Christ on the earth, the inner body. And because Christ is in you, he starts prompting a work in you. Are you getting me? Jesus says, believest thou, believest, do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Do you, he asked them, he said, do you believe me? Apostle Emma, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, he said, he asked him a question. He asked them, he says, do you believe that the Father is in me and I am in the Father? Praise God. Now let's understand that statement. Believe us now, not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. It means Jesus, the Father was talking in Jesus. He says, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Now, from, from the word, it has become works. It means Jesus is not, listen, he's not accrediting works to working. 
Okay, let me work. Let me go to work. Ah, as the Father speaks the words of God, the word there is Rema. Are you hearing me? He says, the, the Remas that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. It means the Father is speaking Rema in the Son, Jesus Christ. And as the Father speaks Rema, what starts happening? Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, they that are of God, hear the remnants of God. Listen, if you want to see work in your life, tune yourself to Rema. You shall see things in your life. Listen, move. Because Rema is work. Because Rema is the offensive, the offensive word of the Spirit. It means once Rema is in your spirit, listen, work start manifesting in your life. You start opening the eyes of the blind. Are you getting me? You enter a room and God starts healing. Are you getting me? That's how we are going to heal. Rema. That's work. He says faith without works. It means he's trying to say the true mark of faith is that you shall see the works. At that point, you don't try to heal. You heal. At that point, you look at a baby, and the baby grows. Rem! Listen, listen, do you know what Rema is? Do you know what Rema is? That's, listen, that's the offense. That's when God starts offending. That's the spirit of offense. That's the spirit that moves things in your life. That's the anointing of God that He has placed in your life to ensure. That everything moves and proves that you are God. Do you understand me? Listen. Listen. You have failed to have a baby. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say I'm pregnant. That's right. Are you getting me? You know, the other day I was driving and I started, I was in the car. I started faking tears. Because I hadn't cried in a while. I started faking tears. Do you know what I was saying? I was saying, God, I'm so anointed. You understand? I, I say I'm anointed. You understand? I said, before I knew it, I was crying. Before I knew it, the anointing was all over the place. Are you getting me? He says, they that are of God, hear the remnants. You start, you start getting the true proof of God saying, you are anointed. As you fake it, you start hearing rema in your spirit. The Lord starts saying, you are anointed, my son. As, as, as you start doing that, <laughs> oh, you see, I remember I had been preaching at a place and I was preaching about the righteousness of God. The word righteousness meaning we, we are the daikajun, we are the equity of God, we are the equals of God. Sylvia calls me after, I was preaching to medical doctors, and I told people that we are the equity of God. The word daikajun. Means you are the equal of God. That's what righteousness means. You, are in, you stand where he stands. When he breathes, you breathe. When he smiles, you smile. So Sylvia calls me and says, oh, We have a relative in London who is sick with malaria. I said, Thank you for calling me. Now, listen, at that moment, religion was about telling me pray. And I just, that, that anointing of being the righteousness of God. I told Sylvia, thank you for calling me. At that moment, listen, if you have, listen, if you have been in the healing ministry for some time, there's a light that ticks. Healing is the children's bread. When Sylvia hung up her phone, I knew that that lady was healed. She called me the next day, says, Pastor Zach, they have actually discharged the patient in London. Listen, there was no prayer. But listen, the rema of, of righteousness. I imagined, I imagined someone making a call to God. And say, oh, I, I, that's, that's what entered my spirit. I remember someone calling God and saying, my, my sister is sick. Then God said, thank you. I said, thank you. The next day, Sylvia called me excited and saying, listen, our relative has been discharged in London. That's what you carry. Now listen, now I'm explaining what. You listen to work. Listen to your life. He says, I have given you life. There's life and death. But I have given you the way. He says, choose. The life in Christ is not a struggle. 
No, the life in Christ is more than persuasion. The life in Christ, are you getting me? Is a sure life. Are you getting me? Listen. When the Bible says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. You see the pattern? He spake as a child. He understood as a child. And thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, we are, I'm speaking to men right now. I'm not speaking to children. Next line. He says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know. The word there is epignosco. He says, I shall epignosco, even as also I am epignosco. It means, there's a place where you shall have the revelation of God, as he has revelation of you. Hey! You, you have, listen, listen. It means, the way you carry revelation of who you are, you shall come to the understanding, Bishop, of the revelation God has of you. Eh? It means, Bishop, you now become, you are the revelation of God. That's being a man. It means you know what God knows. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you have come to know. Listen, God, listen, God has a perception, God fills you. Listen, the word perception, when you, you start perceiving God, there's a place where God starts perceiving Pastor Zach. He's like, oh, I feel Pastor <laughs> Look at meditation now. He says, they that feel after God. Listen, the meditation of feeling after God is that he feel, feeling after is because he feels you, he touches you, then you feel him. So, listen, the place now is not you having revelation of God, but coming to the revelation of what God knows of you. Now, listen, listen to Rema. Rema now starts speaking in your spirit and says, I am the revelation of God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am the revelation of God. I am the mystery of God. No wonder David says, he says, I am indicting a good matter. He says, I'm indicting a good matter. Which touches the heart of the king. It means, oh, when the Bible says that God is bottomless, even God thinks, Pastor Zach is bottomless. Oh, it means God also expects some crazy stuff. It means that sometimes I'll say something, oh, God will say, oh my God. Oh, can you imagine? Listen, listen to a man meditating. You're there meditating to God amazed. No wonder the Bible says when, Peter, when Stephen spake these things, the Bible says, and Jesus stood on this, listen, he stood on the throne, and the heavens were open. Praise God. Why? Because Stephen was preaching the Christ. No, I know why I can't sit. Let me tell you, I fell to preach while sitting. The moment I start preaching, I find myself up. It means, listen, I understand. When we throw mystery, Jesus... The Bible says he's seated on the throne. But when I start splitting, cutting him, cutting him asunder, I start splitting, he can't sit. He stands, praise God. And at the place of splitting mystery, the heavens are open. Do you understand me? Listen, we have not yet gone deep in the things of God. You, you, listen, you are the re- listen, listen, you are the revelation of God and you think you can have HIV. You are the revelation. You are the mystery. It means God also has you as mystery. God carries you as mystery in His spirit. And you think. He says, I shall see God face to face. Face to face. I don't speak to Moses in visions and dreams. No, I speak to him face to face. When I'm speaking with Pastor Nixon, we speak man to man. There's no, you understand, there's no beating around the bush. How we are men. That's the beauty. Listen. Now God has created a pedestal where you speak face to face. You tell him, God, you know what? Today I'm bored. I'm bored. Africa is ours. 
Uganda is ours. Fanero is ours. The other day I told, I said something. I said a statement somewhere. I said my whole family, nuclear family is born again. They come where I go. What I mean is my father, mother. Many times they come here. But that was a meditation many years ago. I knew it. I said I can't carry this thing on my own. Don't come. A young man had me say that. He found his, dr- his brother on drugs. He said, no, 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 no. no." He said, this boy is my brother. Immediately, his brother left drugs. Just a meditation. Are you getting me? Because, listen, to him, he didn't take it lightly. You, listen, you can't carry. Listen, listen to what God has privileged us to carry. And we are still in petty things. We are still in petty about what doctrine is right. Eh? We are still in, you understand, that kind of thing. Fanero is a cult. Ah, no, this one is right. No, 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 this, this is grace. No, 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 no. Listen, some men are there meditating and saying, Oh, I'm the revelation of God. Rabba Satalaba. Now, listen, the Bible says, Who can know the spirit in a man? Who can know the thoughts that are in a man? Save the spirit which is in that man. It means, once I carry the spirit of that man, I shall know his thoughts. How carry his thoughts. But listen what, you, what God has done. God has given us his spirit that we might. He has given you his spirit that you... I know what God is up to. It's not a surprise. I know what God is up to. He, he has given me his spirit that I may walk in his condition. That his condition may be my condition. When the Bible says he's holy, I am holy. That's why for me I like to say he's holy. Because I remember I'm holy. That's the power of worship. He, listen, he's holy. You are holy because He's holy. You are the righteous of God because the righteous of God. You are great because He's great. It's that the life. Anything about Him is our life. Now listen, listen, church. Look at that meditation. Look, listen. Look at that place. What kind of children will you have? Yeah, my, the headmaster of my son made me laugh. He said, your son, we were celebrating a birthday. And they were celebrating a birthday of a kid who was four years. So they told them, put up your hands and count to four. So for him, when they told him, put up your hands, he closed his eyes. Oh! <laughs> oh! For him, he was releasing the anointing. He thought that they were talking about, how can you tell mature men, one, two, three, four? For him, because whenever he's, we are in the heart of Christ, Christ's heart, he's never seen guys, he, saw, he also raised his hand. So for him, when he raised his hands, he closed the eyes because he knew it's time for this thing. That's the breed we are raising. <laughs> I understand why he calls me Pastor Zach. I understand. He does not think I'm normal. Listen, every, listen, we used to tell kids when we were in school, we say, my daddy is stronger than your daddy. No, my daddy is, you understand, that kind of thing. Even kids have that, uh, listen, they have that thing. They want to prove that their fathers are the greatest. Then you come and say, our son, you see, there is no money in this world. You see? <laughs> you need to laugh. Listen. Sometimes when, listen, no wonder we fear. We love to say we fear. Because when we start meditating on what's going on, what's happening in this day, we fear. This is godly fear. This is godly fear. You need to fear your life. It's dangerous. You need, listen, you need, listen, you need, you need to start meditating. Stop wasting time in breathless things. Praise God. Stop wasting time in baseless things. I was talking to my wife yesterday and, and we had a chat over something I found very interesting. She told me. She works with an NGO that does research. She told me, according to research, they say that women have a greater ability to contain stress than men. According to science. And I tried to think about it. I thought about it for a while. Then I, the scripture tells me 
He says, we are troubled everywhere. He says, we are troubled everywhere, but not distressed. The new creature does not have the ability to contain stress. The new creature, the, actually in the scriptures, there's no word when Paul says, I, Paul says, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. It means, listen, women of God, don't believe that lie. You don't have any ability to carry stress. That's a scientific lie. Listen, it doesn't matter how troubled you are. You don't have the ability to have stress. Why? Because the sufficiency is not of yourself. The sufficiency is of God. Are you getting me? I went to the Apostle Grace for Science Women's Ministry. We went to many. And as we were listening to the women, they were asking us questions. I realized these women were opposed to their husbands. Their husbands, they were... <laughs> because, listen, such lies. Listen, women, don't, listen, don't carry any stress. It's not, listen, it's not your right in Christ. It's not a right. Listen, Christ is your life. How do you carry? Look at church. It means that church does not have the ability to carry stress. Some people say I'm mentally stressed. But listen, your head is Christ. Your, listen, your head is Christ. So it means, listen, we've got this thing in ourselves that the Bible says that the excellence, we've got this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power might be of God and not of ourselves. That's who you are in Christ. The excellence of power. The excellence of power. Someone was asking me whether it's Edie tomorrow. I said, do you want it to be Edie? They, they said... The Muslims need to see the moon. So if we want it to be Edie, we can make the moon be seen. Do you realize why Muslims have to give their lives to Christ? We can all rub a supper. What is a sign to them? We can, ah, yeah, yeah, we can manifest. Do you want Edie tomorrow? Do you want to rest with your families? You know what to do now. Make the moon visible. Joshua stopped the sun. You can make the moon visible. Praise God. Our friends want to have a holiday tomorrow. That's your life in Christ. He says, do not be beguiled by the simplicity which is in Christ. Do you understand me? This, listen, we are wasting too much time this, 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 discussing Christ. Let's demonstrate Christ. Let's demonstrate Christ. This thing is more than words. He said, listen, there's a place where Rema now becomes works. I just love the word. Rema becomes works. So a man just realized that actually his progression in life is by the supply of Rema in his spirit. The more Rema that comes out of his spirit, the more works increase in his life. And then Jesus Christ said, they that believe in me shall do greater works. Oh, what works must we do, Jesus? What works? What must shall we do that we may work the works of God? He says, to work the works of God, believe in the Son whom He sent. Give it to me in the message. I love the message, how the message says it. Just go back, 27. He says, don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that. Work for the food that sticks with you. Food that nourishes your, listen, your lasting life. Food the Son of Man provides. And He that does are guaranteed by God the Father. Next line. It says, to that they said, well, what do we do then to get in on God's works? He says, what do we do in to get in on God's works? Listen to the question. Jesus said, throw your lots in with the one that God has sent. That kind of commitment gets you in God's works. He says, he says throw the towel. Are you getting me? Get in on what God is doing. He said, believe. So when a man believes, God is working. He says, Abraham believed in God. Abraham believed in God. And it was counted, it was imputed unto him as righteousness. It means when he believed in God, he was made the righteousness of God. Not because he prayed. No, because he believed. The Bible says it was imputed unto him as righteousness. What do you believe today, child of God? What do you believe in God? Listen, what do you believe today? You see, many people don't understand something. I want to end with this scripture. I want to end with this scripture. 
We don't understand when the Bible says, it says, therefore now, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. It says, listen, if there's something you have not understood, I want you to understand this part and we end. The number eight is the number of new beginnings. Eight is the new beginning. On the seventh day, he rested. It means everything now was new. Romans 8 starts and says, therefore now, he's talking about the now, now faith. He's talking about our life right now. He says, therefore now, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. He says, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Listen, the word condemnation is men who have given themselves an adverse sentence in life. It means there is no advanced sentence. In, some people have given themselves sentences in Christ. They say, I can't make it. My life is nothing. That's a sentence. He says, he says, he says therefore now, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now what people don't know, when there is a comma there, the next part, he's describing what it means to be in Christ. He says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now listen, he's not saying when you're in Christ, don't walk after the spirit. Walk after the... He says when you're in Christ, you don't have the ability to walk after the flesh. Listen, listen, listen to English. Understand English. He says, now therefore, there is no condemnation to them who, which are in Christ Jesus. Who... Who? Walk not. It means he first disqualified. What can't happen when you're in Christ Jesus? <laughs> Listen, he first disqualified, Apostle Emma. What can't happen when you're in Christ Jesus? He said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The word Christ is the word Christos, which means anointed. It means you're in the anointed. When you're in the anointed, you cannot walk after the flesh. Amplified says the dictates of the flesh. He says, who walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. It means, when you're in Christ Jesus, the spirit starts dictating your life. Look at that meditation. When you're in Christ, <laughs> your life becomes the dictation of the spirit. Listen. Your life in Christ is not a place of struggle. Your place, you see, your life is a dictation of the Spirit of God. Then in verse 2, he does something. In, listen, bless, he blesses my spirit. He starts explaining. He says, for the law of the Spirit of life. He, he, he called that a law. You are under a law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're a human being and you stand on this platform, if you go in the air, you will just come down. Because of the law of gravity. Now he goes, he goes back. He says, for the law, just as gravity is a law to the human beings, he has called a law called the law of the spirit of life. It means your life now is not a place where you try. Your life has, is now under the law. No wonder Jesus says, you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You have omitted the law because there's a law in your life. It means there's a law that you have to be blessed. There's a law in your life that you're anointed. There's a law in your life that you're rich. It's a law. It's not a place of... Listen, even in the world, it's a law. Gravity is a law. There's a law in the spirit. He says, for the law of the spirit of life, the Bible says, has made me free from the law of sin and death. It means now I'm under the law of free men. If I'm under the law of free men, I am freedom. Do you realize? It means right now, you are now the true entity called freedom. You, you listen, you're not going to become free. You're under the law. Get it for me in Amplified. Amplified. It says, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. The law of our new being. Listen, it's a law of your new being. It means when, when you come into Christ, there's a law called the law of the spirit of life. Has freed me from the law of sin and death. Give it to me in the message. Give it to me in the message version. He says, a new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a fated lifetime of, of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. It means right now, sin and death have no place in your life. Why? Why? 
Jesus goes on to say, for what the law could not do. For what the law could not do. The law could not put a perfection in you, man of God. He said, for what the law could not do. The Bible says, Jesus came in the disguise of sinful flesh. He says, for what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin. It means he came for sin. The Bible says, condemned sin in the flesh. Let's understand what it means in the Amplified Version. He says, for God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh. The entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin. God condemned sin in the flesh. He subdued. Listen, listen to this knowledge. He subdued. He overcame. He deprived it of its power. Over all who accept the sacrifice. Now listen. This is deeper. God has deprived sin of power in your life. It means any habits that are not of God. Listen, that mentality will take any child from drugs. That understanding, listen, will take anyone, anyone from any habit. Why? Because sin, sin has been overpowered in your life. At that point, you start realizing that actually, my life is actually the meditation of God. I want us to get on our feet. Listen, I don't want to say things that excite you. I want you to just listen. First carry the understanding that your life is actually the meditation of God. The Bible says, who accuses the brethren? It says, is it God? No, the Bible says, God justifies the ungodly. Is it Christ? The Bible says, no, he intercedes. Listen. He intercedes for he God. Listen, his own. It means your life is actually the prayer of Christ. Are you getting me? There's a place where, listen, he starts praying in you. The Bible says the disciples, the disciples of Jesus Christ. The disciples of Christ, listen, the apostles. The Bible says they gave themselves continually to the ministry of the word. It means the word was ministering to them. The word was serving them. And the Bible says, and continually unto prayer. It means at this level, they were submitted to prayer. They were not praying. Prayer was praying in them. Are you getting me? The Christ. When you start to realize that your life actually is a total sum of the meditation and the prayer of God. Listen, you can only bear results. When you start to realize that your life actually is the true understanding of the river of God revealed in your life. You start to realize that actually, no wonder they say it's by the grace of God. The grace of God becomes real. Because the grace of God now becomes the divine influence of God in the human spirit. Meaning the outworkings now are the works of God. But his influence has mantled your spirit. He has taken over your spirit. He has saved your mind. He said, oh, the Bible says we are kept by the power of God. It means God has mantled your life. He has owned it. He has taken over it. It means everything now can only be God in your life. And that becomes the true sum and the condition of your life. The true experience of Christianity is God living in man. God manifesting his life in man. God vindicating himself to tell people that actually, that Jesus Christ is the true son of God. And because you carry him on the inside, your life is a total manifestation of the life of God. The spirit of life, the Bible says, Oh, has made me free. It means your true understanding. You're the essence of freedom. It means when you come in contact with men, men become free. You now, you're what frees men? Because you're already free in Christ Jesus. Look at that understanding in God. It means our lives right now are not a place where you're struggling to be something. It's a place where we know that we are everything in God. Why? Because His zeal shall perform everything. His zeal shall perform that meditation of God's zeal performing everything in your life, you come to rest. The Bible says, they that have ceased from their own works have entered his rest. They that have ceased from, listen, child of God, I want to reveal to you the understanding today. The spirit of God right now ensures and proves to your life, listen, that listen, you don't need to work. I already worked. I work in your life mightily. 
I do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask according to that power that worketh in you. That's the power of God in your life today. Today we are not men. Today it's God living in us. We have ceased being men because we are born of the Spirit. God is a Spirit. God is alive in us. When we preach the gospel of Christ, men come to the true experience of Christ. Men's lives are exchanged to Christ. And our desire and true place now is that men may come to the total understanding and apprehension that the gospel shall be preached across the whole globe. We shall fill the whole Christ as the waters cover the sea. As the waters cover the sea, so shall my glory cover the earth. Today in Fanero, we believe and we know, we believe and we know that this gospel, this gospel is going to touch every man. Every man in our lives, every man that we know, this saving gospel of Christ Jesus, we are going to listen. Listen, when you touch any man that sick, God is healing. When you look at any man, God is looking at them. When you listen to any man, God is listening to them. Oh, The anointing upon your life is not for you, it's for everybody else. Because you are the body of Christ. You are the true son of the body of Christ. Right now I declare, by the mercy of God, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen, your life is as sure as God raised Jesus from the dead. Your life is as sure as you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Listen, your finances are like that. Your children are like that. Your ministry is like that. Your jobs are like that. Your ministries are like that. Listen, the world shall know God by you. The world shall know God by you. Father, we thank you for this anointing. We thank you for this grace. We thank you that you have put your spirit within us. That we might walk in the experience of God. That God may be the sum of our condition. That the experiences of our lives might be God. When they ask you how you are doing, you say God. When they say, what are you looking at? You say God. When they say, what's your experience? You say God. Because that's all you know. That's all you need. That's all you'll ever need in your life. That's all you need. He's ever here. Our ever present. He's ever present. Our ever present help in time of need. Panera is the Lord. Your life is the Lord. Listen, men are healed by the numbers in your lives. Miracles, signs and wonders. The prophetic ministry is yours. That's the proclamation of truth in your life. The power to heal. The power to heal men. The power to raise the dead is on the inside of you. As you speak in tongues right now, as you speak in tongues, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, with the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, this world is yours. But the Bible says all things are yours. All things are yours. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com you can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still feel free to join us every thursday for our weekly fellowships at uma multipurpose hall from 5 p.m to 8 p.m you can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash fenero fenero make manifest